So this is really all about expectations. So with tic-tac-toe, we have certain kinds of game expectations. This is how we play tic-tac-toe. We've been playing since we were little kids. We know how it goes, right? Same with faces. We know what faces look like. They go out this way, right? If, if we saw an actual face that like, went in this way, you would be freaked the fuck out, right? Um, that's, that's, not, that's not a normal thing. You would, you would be disturbed by that, right? Uh, same with conversations, right? We have a certain kind of anticipation for what conversations do and how they function, right? So for example, I kind of said this already, but we have expectations, yeah? And they're based on things like grammar and also socialized norms of behaving. So for example, we have preference structure, right? So um, in conversation analysis, there's this idea of preference structure. And basically what they say is if you provide a, the preferred response, the socially preferred response, not your individual preferred response, right? Like if I say, you know, do you have ice cream or do you have any ice cream? The preferred response for me is always yes, yeah? Um, right? But that may not necessarily be what the grammar of that sentence requires. I'm going to show you an example in a second. Um, but so if I say, do you want to go out for a drink? If you say yeah, then we're done, right? Like we're done with that conversation. I've asked you for a thing, right? I said, do you want to do this thing? You said, yeah, I totally do. And basically, we can kind of wrap that and go on to something else, right? Um, but when you go against the preferred structure and do something that's not part of that organized game, as it were, um, it requires a whole pile of extra work. Right? So if I say, you want to go out for a drink, and you want to say no, you got to do extra stuff to make sure that like, you're not making me feel bad. Right? So you might be like, ah, oh, I can't. I got to stay late for this meeting or whatever. Right? Like, it's sort of like asking somebody out on a date. If you ask somebody out on a date, you'll be like, yeah, you want to go out on a date? And they'll be like, yeah, done. Right? But if you say, do you want to go out on a date, and, they, and you, and you want to say no, like, you can't just be like, nah. And then like you're out. You can't do that. Like that's not okay, right? Like they'd be like, what a jerk, um, right? So I mean, I guess you could do it, but you know, it'd, it'd be jerky, right? It'd be jerky, um, right? So you, you you go through a whole series of explanations. Ah, oh, I really wish I could, but I'm seeing someone, or ah, oh, I really wish I could, but I'm you know I'm shampooing my hair that night, or what, whatever it is. Um, you know, I'm I'm getting a manicure, or I'm I have work to do, or whatever it is, right? Um, that you're kind of getting out of that experience right, of going out on a date. So you have more work to do. When you violate the structure, there's more work that has to get done. right? So we see structure all the time. We're socialized to predict what that structure is going to be. Another example, how many of you have been in a class where somebody, where a professor, where we're basically right at the end, has said, any questions? Right? Two of you? Really? I feel like it's got to be all of you. I, I feel like every professor I've ever heard in my entire life has said any questions. Um, and it's weird, because the word any presupposes or prefers an answer no every time. Every time. So when a, when a professor says any questions, the preferred response is no. And you know how we can tell that that's true? Because they ask it in the last minute of class. If they wanted time for questions, they would leave time for questions. Or they would say, what questions do we have? Right? Which, which, which presupposes that I actually have questions that are, that, you know, the, the you guys have questions that are, 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 are going to be asked, right? Um, but to say any questions suggests that, like, no, there aren't. And so they did this study where they went into doctor's offices, um, and doctors were saying that they, um, uh, patient satisfaction was down. Yeah? And so they said, well, you know, because you know how when you go to the doctor, you got like that one thing you want to take care of, but always there are like a couple ancillary things that like, if you had time, you could be like, oh, by the way, I also need you to do this thing, or can you also look at this? Right? There are usually a couple extra things. Um, and so patients weren't getting those answered. Um, and doctors were like, look, if we get, if we ask them, if we, if we let them, you know, ask all their questions, we're going to be here all day. Right? So um, Heritage and Robinson, uh, these two linguists, went into the doctor's offices and they said, all right, well, y'all doctors, yeah, I'm from the South, y'all doctors um, are going to say, are going to keep saying any questions, yeah? And y'all doctors are going to say, what questions do you have, yeah? And what they found was with this group, not only did the ancillary questions of the patients get answered, but the interactions were shorter because the patients 
got to get through their questions. They had things. So in this group, the patients delay, there are long pauses, silences, awkwardness, because they want to ask that stuff, but like, there's no option for that. It's like when a teacher asks you any questions. I feel so bad for that one student that does. They're like, actually, I do have a question. It's so awkward for that student because they can't break the structure, because breaking structure is really hard to do, and it's awkward.